Brian says, I'm looking to take away OneDrive File Explorer sync from my tenant. Don't want users to be able to work off files locally and want them to only work off Word online, Excel online, et cetera, while in the browser. Well, that's very trusting of you, Brian, that the internet will always work. Uh, I know it has to do with condition access, but honestly don't know the correct settings or setup to make it work. Any help is appreciated. The first part of setup for this is to um, get a lot of candy because when people call you crying, you're going to need to send them gifts to make up for the fact that you've taken away their file explorer sync option. Yeah, the working <clears throat> files, I, I think, OK, so there's two things. One, yes, you can if you just reduce down the license that you give them, because then it'll just force, like, if you went down to an F1 or something like that, like a front line, it doesn't come with the desktop version of Office. So maybe you're paying for too much for your license in the first place. Mm. Um, <laughs> so Smart. I look at that. And I have to go, well, well, why don't you want them to be able to have them? Is it because they are like a frontline worker? And there are reasons around, you know, they don't need it. That might be the they don't need it. If it's not about that and it's about controlling what they can do on their desktop, are you talking about working from home, BYOD, so they can't open a document to their to their desktop? You know, that's, that's then other policies that are to do with, you know, working from home. Um, or is it inside and they then can't, you know, if they're inside an organisation and they can only work online and can't download to be able to do the, the larger functionality that's in the application, yeah, you're going to need to get that candy because you're going to have some very upset, you know, workers that can't actually do what they need to do, some of the simplistic things, even something like if you've got a macro type document, you can't even run those when you're up in the cloud. They've got to be open to the desktop. And if a file is over a particular size, when you're dealing with it online, like an Excel document, document if it's going over 10 megabytes you can't actually work with it you know so when you get on um when you get online it has to actually open to the desktop for you to be able to work in that excel file you can't co-collaborate in large excel files online it's going to want you to do it on the desktop there's no ways around it so you have to really consider your reasons why because i kind of go don't just like i, I need more information <laughs> we say this a lot but I need more, a lot more information, really. What about you, Sharon? I mean, you would see this too, where they say, ah, I don't want them to do it. No, we have tons of people who ask for this. Um, we, yeah. I, I think we probably coach on, you know, OneDrive Sync is like half our business sometimes. Um, yes. And, and oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. this is the conversation we have is like, well, what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. What's the problem? What is, what's the problem yeah. that you're having? I find that often the people who say this to me are struggling because people are not managing their files properly. They're not managing versioning properly. And so they think, well, if I turn this off, it's going to solve their problem. So typically the yeah. first thing that we try to, to have people do um, is go into where their files are stored in SharePoint. And you can actually change the behavior to default to go to the online version of that application first. And if you set the default for the whole for all of your SharePoint sites to do that, then at a bare minimum, it will open in the browser first, and 80% of people won't do anything past that. Then your more expert users, your bigger files, your files with macros, things like that, um, those people can then handle that in an exception way by then downloading it. And then the second thing we do is train people how to use sync properly. So we train them on how to only sync what they need when they need it, and then how to stop syncing that content when they don't need to sync that content so that they're only managing the files that they need to be able to get. Um, and if you've, if you've created an architecture where everything's very organized in terms of teams and groups and sites and libraries and things like that, that should be a very easy thing to do from the beginning. So I agree, there's probably a ton more questions that need to be asked, but I don't know that I would jump straight to doing that unless you have a pretty big reason to. You, you know, so only... just to add on to that, I would say that, you know, if you, because I love that default for the browser first, for, but don't take away the ability to go do the local for the people that need that. You can actually monitor that for 30, 60, 90 days. And then maybe if it is kind of what, you know, Kirsty, you were saying, if it's about reducing the licensing costs and going to cheaper licenses for those that aren't using that capability, do that, make that decision based off data. Look at who's actually using that and then make a decision. Right? Maybe even make that voluntary. You, you ask people, hey, we're trying to reduce some of the costs here. For those that are fine with using just the browser-based versions of the Office Productivity, 
you know, let us know uh, and we'll switch the license types over to that. What concerns me a little around this question as well, Christian, is that, you know, if they're not doing the OneDrive sync, what's happening with all the local files on those devices, you know, because if there's no syncing, there's no backing up. They've got the potential to lo losing an awful lot of data with no backup Indeed. on a laptop. That really worries me because then I kind of <clears> go, well, where's all of your policies or retention around a laptop? If it dies and you've got someone that's been working with you for five years and you're not backing it up, like, okay, you got a lot well, of really that, upset people. Well, see, that, that's why part of the process would be, and I'm sure Sharon, you're going to say the same thing is that you, you know, when you, they, when they understand that, then the, the the default thing to do is to make sure that they're everything is synced dual between both environments first before yes. turning that off, so you're not losing anything and you have that that mm -hmm. version of it. So that needs to be part of that planning if you go that direction. Governance back to yeah. governance. Governance. Yes. Governance. yes. <laughs> governance is the word of the day. It seems to come around to that question a lot. <laughs> yep. It's it's one of those things where it's funny. I mean, uh, looking back at, um, and I know that you know so many uh, of us that you know that do these AMAs, the N365 AMAs, come from the SharePoint world, and uh, and I just made this comment online today too that we used to worry so much around, you know, so much of you know, go to a go to sessions at a conference or a SharePoint Saturday, and it was so much of it was about keeping the servers up and running and healthy and performing well, all those kinds of things. And now so much more is about the usage of the actual technology. We're talking less about keeping it running and more less operational and more about actually using it and benefiting our, our companies, our organizations. And with that change in topics, it's more of a discussion around governance. So yeah, this is very much like, yes, you can do this. So Brian, yes, you can take that away. Is that the best thing for your business? Could it cause other problems? It could cause some shadow IT results of people going and doing things that you don't like because they can't, they don't have the functionality. Sorry, there is not parity in all tools between the desktop applications and the web versions. Uh, and and so if you just do that without giving people uh, a voice in that process, then it could cause you some pain later. Yeah, and I mean, uh, my, uh, I mean, I used to always do the training where I would be doing from online, always starting from online, logging in online, editing from online, and eventually I realised that you know right across um, business, whether it be enterprise or gov or health or whatever that looked like, I actually had to flip my training and start from the desktop creating a Word document and then go file save as with the syncing on OneDrive or SharePoint and then save it to the cloud from the desktop. I had to flip it all back. I couldn't keep trying to drive people to the online because it was not a natural and inherent behaviour. And I still, you know, it's getting there, but I still think that you know across businesses we still tend to start from the desktop so if you're going to push them to start from the cloud and stay in the cloud you'd better have a really good change program around that to drive forward a new way of working and how to actually do it and what are the limitations around it to be really clear for your users if you're going to take that away because <clears throat> I've seen it go very pear shape in organizations if you want to test the adoption of the, of the cloud of the version all you need to do is turn off the internet access shut it down and then wait yeah. and see who complains if there's people that are still working away and have no idea that 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 happened they're able to be equally productive those are the people that are not adopting the cloud i think the person yes. who makes that decision the rest decision. of us are like i can do nothing it's it's broken like the, the let's go home the person who makes that decision should also be the person who's required to be on call for the entire weekend following Absolutely. that decision. Of course. And yeah. you also only get to work online. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Now. Now. Like now we're apple? talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> right. Yeah. I think I think we pulled out the the stick and the was the carrot involved. I think it was just the stick. <laughs> I said candy. I brought up two. Candy. That's right. Two. That's true. We started with candy.